What do you do before you go for, um, when you, before you start your exercise routine? You usually, you know, if let's say you're going to go, um, go work out, you, you, usually the first thing you do is warm up. Uh, maybe you do like a two minute jog or you stretch. You do something before you begin that heavy workout. Um, and if you're going to cook something, you plan it, right? When you cook, before you cook something, you, you put all the ingredients together. You make sure that you have everything needed. Uh, you don't want the uh, unnecessary, you're starting to, 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 to uh, make some dish and find out that you don't have the right ingredients. Uh, so you usually try to prepare properly in order to be present in what you need to do. And that calls to mind a passage that I was recently reading in the scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we all know that, right? When as often as we eat this bread and this wine, uh, and drink this, uh, this cup, we are proclaiming the, the Lord's death and his resurrection. Whoever therefore... Paul goes on to say, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. So this we sometimes don't understand fully. What Paul is saying here is, if you eat, if you come and take the kurbana, drink, uh, and you take that kurbana, but you do it in an unworthy manner, what happens? What happens is that we will be guilty of profaning, guilty of, of, uh, of, of, of not giving the, the worthiness to what we've been given. So Paul says, let each of us examine themselves and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. That is why Many of you are weak or ill, and, ha- and some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we should not be judged. It's a pretty harsh verse. <laughs> it's saying that only those who are worthy should come and receive the body and blood. Or actually, does it say that? Doesn't it more say those who partake of the cup and, uh, un- in an unworthy manner? But too often, we read in this passage that it's, if we are unworthy, we should not receive. But it's when we receive it in an unworthy manner. Because truly, we are already unworthy of it. We are unworthy of the kurbana that we receive today. And even though we are unworthy of it, the calling for us is to make sure that we don't receive it in an unworthy manner. In an unworthy manner. And so we go back to uh, this idea of how do we prepare ourselves for kurbana and for prayer itself. Before a workout, we warm up. Before cooking, we put the ingredients together. We prepare. In every major activity of our lives, there is a time of preparation that is needed. And that preparation is key. As a priest, I have to prepare the night before uh, Kurbana. There's things that I have to do. There's things that, um, that I, uh, I need to do uh, that, that prepare me to receive or to, 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 to stand here at the altar and to do what I'm called to do. Even at the start of the, uh, the Sunday services, the first thing the Achin does is what we call Thuyobo. It's a Syriac word. And Thuyobo means it, 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 it's a preparation. It's a preparation. And so I stand in the altar with the curtains closed while the rest of you do the morning prayer. And why are you doing the morning prayer? To prepare yourselves for the Kurbana. And I stand in the altar and I say prayers that prepares myself and this altar and this church for Christ's presence. So where does this leave us? What are we called to do? Just like I am called to prepare, you are called to prepare. The thing is, you know, we stand in this church 
And as we stand, sometimes our minds will go back to the, the TV show that we watched last night. Or it goes back to uh, the things that are going to happen after church today. And a lot of times, we are not present or prepared ourselves to stand here in the church. Or, you know, one thing that I really appreciated was a couple weeks ago, um, when Steve Cristoforo came, uh, one of our youth asked, he asked, um, what do you do when you don't feel like you're getting any value out of your prayers? Let me say that question again. What do you do when you don't feel like you're getting any value from your prayers? So we stand and, you know, during our, our evening prayer as a family, hopefully you're using, uh, you know, even the, just the common prayer book. And you read that common prayer book and you're saying uh, the Kalma, the uh, Lord's Prayer. Maybe you're saying Psalm 91, you that sit in the shelter of the Most High, by the sh- glory of the shadow of God. And you're saying these prayers. And I remember saying it as a child over and over again to the point where it wasn't even, it was just a mechanical action. So I really appreciated this question. What do you do when you don't feel like you're getting any value from your prayers? And Steve gave us a couple of answers to this. But one that I wanted to to focus on today is that he said, Steve said, prepare yourself before prayer. That even when we pray ourselves at home, we should spend a couple minutes to quiet our minds and be ready to pray. Because otherwise, when we pick up that prayer book, we just are saying words and not present in that prayer. Prayer is meant to, for us to be present in. And so there is the need for us to spend a moment, meditation, quieting our mind, spend a moment to prepare ourselves for our family prayer time, for our individual prayer time, and for even coming here to this church. That's why one, one of the reasons last night, and I, I didn't uh, communicate this uh, well enough and I wanted to again, is that one, that was one of the reasons why we moved the family night to before evening prayer. Because there's a preparation needed before Qurbana. Before Qurbana, our minds need to be prepared. And if we go out and we, you know, Saturday night we are spending so much time uh, 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 not focusing on what we should be focusing on, doing things that, you know, we wouldn't necessarily uh, want others to, to know about. If we, if, if we come to this church without a certain preparation, even from the night before, and then we come up to this altar to receive, we might be receiving in an unworthy manner. Now, I'm not trying to, to uh, stop you from receiving because I would ask another question. Is when are we actually worthy to come up and receive? If we were to, for example, spend all of our time Saturday night, and you guys go stay home on Saturday night and, and your family sits together and you read all 150 psalms together and you spend all night vigil and, and um, you, you fast properly um, and you come to church. Are you, are you ready then? Are you ready to receive then? Not necessarily. Because if all of that preparation made you feel as if, yes, I'm worthy to now take the body and blood of Jesus Christ then pride has crept into your heart. Because what Paul says is, he tells us, let each person examine themselves. Let each person examine themselves. And he calls us to examine ourselves. And in that examining, realize what? To realize that we're not worthy. Our prayers and our time with Christ should realize how much we need Him. And so we should come to this church not feeling worthy, but feeling unworthy. And coming before this body and blood, not because we feel worthy, but because we feel unworthy. And in that unworthiness, we're saying, God, we need you. And that's the focus of our prayers. The focus of our prayers is to realize how much we need God and how much... You know, that all starts from what? From a self-examination, from time and quiet. And then we read the prayers of the church fathers, the the, the prayers of the angels when they said, Holy art thou God. And when we say those prayers, they mean something more than just the mechanical action that we do. I bring this up because in today's gospel, 
we see Zechariah who goes to offer incense in the altar. And when he is confronted with an angel, what does Zechariah do? He questions the angel. Who? What are you doing? Why would you question the angel? Because his mind was not necessarily prepared. And so we are called to prepare ourselves for prayer. For prayer individually, prayer with our families, and prayer in this church. So I encourage you, I encourage you, every Saturday night, especially for the acolytes, every Saturday night, spend some time preparing yourselves. I'm not telling you, don't go out to eat dinner with your family, don't go for any celebrations. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that get some good sleep, prepare yourself before the night before, maybe read some scripture, go to sleep, get up in the morning, and avoid other things. Avoid other things that will bother you. And... Uh, I don't say it enough, but you're also not supposed to eat. <laughs> For those, the youngest of our, our church, I, I still feed Zachary and Alexa, but uh, at two and four years old, they don't need to fast. Or if you're older and, and have a, a medical history you, and you need your medicine, you don't need to fast. But for the rest of us who God has given health, we should prepare our stomachs to receive the bread and the wine because that's not just bread and wine. That's the body and blood of Christ. So even a chai or a coffee before coming to receive kribana is not something the church father is necessarily allowed. So we prepare ourselves mind and body and come here not because we're worthy, but because we're unworthy and because he makes us worthy by his death on the cross, by his giving everything to us. And so we come here, we come to this church with that gratefulness, that thankfulness, and the desire for Him, for the God who loves us, the God who makes us worthy. All glory and honor to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit.